It all began when Charlemagne decided to name his firstborn son Pippin illegitimate in favor of his third wife's son, Carloman. See, Pippin would have never been a good king. He was a good-natured fellow and would have been handsome if it weren't for that bend in his spine. Which got him the sorry name of Pippin the Hunchback. <laughs> God. But he was too soft to be a ruler. He would have caved under the pressure. When Charlemagne named Carloman his heir, he was re-baptized as Pippin, the name of the rightful successor. At first, Pippin the Hunchback wasn't too worried by the whole thing. That is, until meddling counts in his father's court convinced him of otherwise. Still shocked. My lord, I extend my sympathies to you in this time of great sorrow. I beg your pardon? Sorrow? Why, yes. You've been shunned, disowned, humiliated by the father you have so willingly served. Well, my father has always treated me well, and... You would relinquish your birthright as emperor to your detested half-brothers? Well, I never really thought about it like that. But you're right. You're right. I understand why you hold such contempt for your brothers. But the church would never agree with you being my heir. I never married your mother in the church. Hand me that arrow. I see a bear. Yes, Lord. Say, when is the next... Uh, big banquet? Hmm. Three weeks. Over the following three weeks, the Counts devised a master plan of murder, which would be implemented by Pippin. After disposing of Charlemagne, his third wife, and Carloman, you, my lord, will take the throne. I decided to send you to the monastery at Prune, where you will live there in repentance for the rest of your days. Well, I guess I deserved it. And so Charlemagne lived out the rest of his days as Emperor and Pippin as a monk. <laughs> <laughs> 